everybody and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always got something to say about the Toronto Blue Jays. I am your host, Adam Peddle. And I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog, and we made it, everybody. My favorite part of the MLB season, it's speculation time, baby. It is time to talk some mid-season trade targets for these Toronto Blue Jays. Before we do that, guys, please make sure to like and comment down below who's your number one target for these Toronto Blue Jays, and maybe a guy, too, that we could ship off. Because usually mm, we talk yeah. about bringing in. We don't yeah. often talk about giving up. So yeah. I, I'm curious to know what, what you guys can come up with. Yeah. Let's jump in and, and talk about really what we've been doing so far this season. Yeah. And just like set the table as to like, you know, why we are choosing yeah. the guys yeah. that we're choosing. You know, what areas of need we need to address. Of course, of course. Well, the Blue Jays overall this season, like honestly to sum it up, we've been kind of upper mid. I was going to say mid. Yeah. But like we're a little bit upper mid. Upper but mid. not a top 10 mid. You know, we're like a, we're like a 12, uh, 11 mid. You mm. know, we look at all of our team stats in the hitting category this is obviously inflated from when we were recording this game yesterday's Rays ball game where we scored 20 runs. 20 like, runs. That's, that's ridiculous. Like, now we jumped up to the ninth spot in OPS in the entire MLB, which is a lot more respectable. I do think we're a top 10 in offense. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really so worried about the offense when it comes to these trade deadline targets. What I'm really, really looking at yes. is the pitching. Now, even though we're top 10, I still think that we need to get a little bit better because when you look at teams like the Houston Astros, mm -hmm. who are World Series champions, right? They're top one. They're one. Yes. And then, you know, you got the Braves, who are easily World Series contenders, the Yankees. Yankees, the Rays, all these tough teams who are up there. And hell, the Rangers, the reason why they're doing so well this year is because they're good pitching. So mm. the Blue Jays, we got to get a bit better. It's always been our Achilles heel. So that's what I'm looking for this trade deadline. 100%, man. And I mean, like, you look at our, you look at our starting rotation, and obviously Gosman is locked in. And I think for the most part, you can say, like, he had a bit of a rough start the last start, but the defense mm. wasn't really behind him. Chris Bassett, for the most part, should be mm -hmm. locked in as a quality guy. Yeah. But after that, I mean, are you going to tell me wholeheartedly that you are fully bought in and trusting that Yusei Kikuchi is going to give you quality uh, quality starts in the playoffs That's right. against quality teams, right? I, you know, it's basically a, 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 fl a flip of a coin, exactly. honestly, against a really good team. He's done it in the past, but, you know, I think he's a good pitcher to get us to postseason. Uh -huh. I, I need some lockdown guys when it comes to game three, game four, game five. Literally, dude. And obviously, Manoa, he should be that guy. He should be. So far, you know, that's yet to be decided jury's still out there and jose barrios god only knows so Same i mean thing. having some more guys in there that we can trust is absolutely important and then obviously that bullpen too that's, that's always huge. been an area of concern so that's definitely a lot of the guys that we're going to be looking at so speaking of the starting pitchers this is like the dream scenario i think this yeah. is kind of like the the top tier guy that would be absolutely incredible in, in some regards, it does make sense, but then in other regards, it would be really freaking hard. That is Eduardo Rodriguez on the Detroit Tigers. His name is going to be circulating a lot because Detroit, they freaking stink. Yeah. They are not very good at baseball right now, but this guy is putting on a clinic right now this season. Dude, he's having a resurgence here, no doubt about it. When you take a look at his last year, you know, 405 year, right? Even with Boston before he went to Detroit, 474. Like, yeah. he felt like, you know, not really that good of a quality pitcher, but he's starting to figure out again, he's starting to click and go to a new level in Detroit. It was so far he's got a 219 ERA with a whip under one. Now that's a guy you really want to rely on. But some of you might be thinking, oh, didn't Eduardo Rodriguez sign like a really long-term deal with mm -hmm. the Detroit Tigers? He did, but there's one thing that's kind of like you know, make it a little bit more interesting to trade him yeah. this season. And that's the fact that he's got a player opt-out. Now, Nick, why, why why is that so interesting? So for the, this, for this is really complex, guys, because there's multiple trains of thought. Obviously, on the surface level, Eduardo Rodriguez, very good player right now, somebody that you want to have on your team and somebody that you really want to be having on a playoff run if he's got a two ERA, right? So that's phenomenal. But then you look at this contract and he's got four years on it. So he's going to cost you something. But then there's this whole added element of, well, he, if he's doing this good, could opt out after this season. So if you're a team, you want to have him on your ball team. But at the same point, you don't want to give up so much capital and then lose him to free agency. And then on the flip side of that coin, you want to get him. But then maybe if he starts sucking, do you want to have a guy on this contract mm -hmm. who's sucking? So there's this entire yeah. whirlwind of like, you know, how do you navigate this situation? And it's very difficult to figure out his value. I think most teams are going to see the writing on the wall. If Eduardo Rodriguez goes into the trade deadline with something like this, I think most teams are going to say the exact same thing to Detroit Tiger general manager. And that's, hey, 
He is going to opt out. Yeah. <laughs> His agent knows he's going to opt out. The world knows he's going to mm -hmm. opt out. I, I'm, a, I'm a general manager. I know he's going to be gone. So we're all going to all body up and team up and mm -hmm. lower the price of Eduardo Rodriguez now. Is that to say that there's going to be a contending ball club that's not going to pay up like crazy for him? Mm -hmm. There absolutely might be. Someone might be crazy enough to do it because, yeah, he will be gone if he's performing like this, right? Um, so will the Toronto Blue Jays do something like that? I, I don't know. It might be tough because I, we spent a lot on pitching recently. I really do think that he should be a target for us. I think that they're going to make phone calls, especially if uh, the entire, especially if this price is that of a one-year player. If his price is that of a one-year player, Toronto Blue Jays should be on the phone and they should be looking at it. It's going to be difficult to swing, obviously, and that's why we're saying that this is definitely kind of one of our top-tier options right here. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not totally buying in that it, that it could happen, but obviously, a guy with a two ERA, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned, this should be our World Series window. So yeah, it should. Yeah, it should. go, you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. make it happen. If he is going to opt out and it's only for one year, screw it, man. Yeah. Like give me that guy. I, I don't really want to be trading Ricky Tiedman for this no, guy or anything no. like that. But you know what? If you have to give up, you know, your fourth rank prospect and somebody else, maybe you can do something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of where I'm leaning to. I would probably do that for a one year mm -hmm. rental. Now, speaking of one year rentals, there's another guy on this list that is a one year rental and he's also having a bit of resurgence as well. And that is Lucas Giolito. I mean, this guy's got a 362 ERA, a whip of 1.1, but it's a resurgence again, folks, because he had some pretty down years. I mean, the 490 last year is the obvious one. Like, yeah. what happened? That was like a Jose Burrios kind of season last yeah. season. Yeah, 100%, dude. Honestly, this gives me hope for Jose Burrios. Yeah, literally. <laughs> looking at Lucas Giolito, you know, everyone was thinking this guy was a stud. He sucked last year, and this year he's kind of really, you know, he's figured it out again. I do think that Lucas Giolito is a quality guy, and this one is a lot more cut and dry dry than Eduardo mm -hmm. Rodriguez. Lucas Giolito is on a one-year deal. The Chicago White Sox suck they right suck. now. I have no idea what is going on, though, over there in Chicago. Chicago White Sox fans, please let me know. But they are not good at baseball right now. Lucas Giolito is good at baseball. And if you are a team that needs starting pitching, which literally every single ball team does if they want to win a World Series, this needs to be a guy mm -hmm. that you are targeting. Yeah, I, I can't agree any further. I mean, now this is a guy that I probably will say the Blue Jays are beyond. And you'd probably be like, well, why, why this guy over Eduardo? Rodriguez and I think it's straight up the price might be a little bit lower sure you know because the, the ERA is a little bit lower um, or, or higher excuse me yeah and then you also got the whole idea of it is very clear cut and dry he will be gone after this year there may not be a pay up or other teams trying to up this price so I think the Blue Jays should be in this is my number one target for the Toronto Blue Jays going into especially because he you're all you're asking him for to be is like a three or four yeah. in the rotation 100% right? dude and and I think that the Toronto Blue Jays if they go out and they get a guy like this they can let him walk right mm -hmm. I think that the mm -hmm. time is gone now where you trade for a guy and then he sign him to a long-term deal. Yeah. No, I think you, you trade you for this go, guy. Let you you let him pitch for you. Yep. He kicks ass. And, you know, if you win a World Series, amazing. If not, whatever. See you later, buddy. Go Ex get paid somewhere else. Exactly. I can't agree more. And, uh, you know, that would be really boosting for the Toronto Blue Jays uh, rotation if they can get something like that. Yeah. Now, what would be really boosting for the Blue Jays bullpen is getting another freaking bullpen arm in there. And there aren't too many options out there right now, but we've got two right here that could work remember this guy this guy used to be new york yankee used to be dominant used to be the face of like bullpen pitchers in the mlb whoa time for your daily betway breather a quick reminder that the best place to bet is on betway must be 19 years of age or older to play in collaboration with iGaming ontario please bet responsibly now Back to the content. Aroldis Chapman, he's having a resurgence kind of year. He signed a one-year deal with the Kansas City Royals. And, like, did anyone expect this to happen? A 289 ERA? And, like, the whip's decent. But, like, this guy's having some sort of comeback, man. Aroldis Chapman, a trade target for the Toronto Blue Jays. What year am I in right now? Could anybody picture it? But seriously, though, this guy's having a phenomenal season. He's got a 2.89 ERA, 18.2 innings pitch. His velo is good right now. His K per nine is mm -hmm. at a place that you want to be. Yeah. So clearly the Yankees were just not utilizing this guy right. That's he, right. He goes over to Kansas City. He's really good now. Exactly. You Sometimes know? just a change of scenery. It's all you need, you know? Literally, dude. And I would love it if that change of scenery could happen mid-season for him to the Toronto Blue Jays. You get another mm -hmm. flamethrower back there, a guy who can handle high leverage mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I mean, who has handled more high leverage situations oh, in their God. career other than a role freaking Chapman? Dude, you want to talk? I mean, he's not as young as he used to be when he won 
the World Series of the Chicago Cubs. But like, man, that guy was a workhorse in that series in 2016. Like, mm-hmm. he literally pitched probably every game. Yeah. Like, if I were to look at the innings, it was crazy, man. But that's the kind of depth and veter- veteran mm-hmm. experience you need. Like, when you look at our bullpen, who's the veteran there? Anthony Bass? Right. Jimmy Garcia? Like, no, I want to roll this Chapman just to be that kind of presence. You know what I mean? 100%, dude. And I, you know what? I love Jordan Romano. I think that Jordan Romano is fantastic. And your role of Chapman would not be coming in and at all, oh, you know, no, replacing no, Jordan Romano no, even in the no. slightest. But our bullpen, when, you know, we're in deep in the playoffs, mm. I would love to have another guy who's been there before be able to talk to them and say, hey, you guys, the moment is the same. Yeah. You can do this, right? I could see our guys, if it's game seven of the World Series right now, starting to get in their noggins mm-hmm. a little bit. And then if you could have a role as Chapman, calm the whole situation down, that would be phenomenal. I think, you know, as well, the role as Chapman just got to lead by example. Just go out there and do his job. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy's pretty much on the way to his retirement. You know what I mean? And yeah. he's just here, like, just demonstrating how to get a job done in high pressure situations bro, bro. can you imagine if we can bring this guy in we're in the alcs toronto oh, yankees. yankees aaron judge <laughs> up to the dish final out a roll this chapman bang 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 oh, you're done so that, that would be such a revenge that's, that's story. a storybook right there literally you know yankee fans would be like tearing their hair out they'd be like what the hell like yeah. why are you doing this to us now yeah you know? yeah no that's that is what i want to see happening for roll this freaking chapman dude that's how his story ends absolutely uh, yeah Young dude, kind of similar to a role this Chapman mm-hmm. in the way that mm-hmm. he pitches, but maybe 10 years prior, Alexis Diaz over there on the Cincinnati Reds. This is another bullpen target that the Toronto Blue Jays absolutely should mm-hmm. be in on. And frankly, any MLB team that oh, likes good pitching 100%. needs to be on the phone for Alexis freaking Diaz. 100%, guys. I mean, the numbers are speaking for themselves. Like a sub two career ERA in two seasons, sub uh, one whip in two seasons. The strikeouts are, are just uncomfortable incredible mm-hmm. and if you flash his baseball reference over here like it's just it's just ridiculous all the red the expected batting average the k percentage in the 100 i and see a lot slugging. of 100 i see there. a lot of 100 right and he can even i think he could probably even get up to no he can't actually he's just under 100 but uh he, he's he's a flamethrower for sure in that bullpen but here's the problem with alexis diaz like any good young stud on a team that's not doing well mm-hmm. and a young stud that has a lot of time mind you on his contract he's only in his second year of his pre-arbitration. So that means he's got at least four more years after this season. Mm -hmm. This this ball club is probably going to want to hang on to him a little bit more, but it doesn't mean that they're not going to answer the phone because some teams might pay up an arm and a leg for this kind of guy. I mean, you said it to me before we even began. You know Eric Swanson costs a lot. Imagine how much Alexis Diaz is going to cost. And it costs. And are the Blue Jays even going to do that? Well, man? listen, man. The Blue Jays need to be doing that. We've been talking about this for a while, folks. Eric Swanson was a phenomenal move. Mm-hmm. And Eric Swanson was the first time that I saw the Toronto Blue Jays management actually spend up on yeah. bullpen. Yeah. This is a guy that will absolutely cost an arm and a leg to get. But isn't it quality? Yeah. Don't you yeah. want it? If yeah. you're going to spend up on anything, give me a young pitcher, a young flamethrower who's got a sub two ERA yeah. and a sub one whip. This is the difference that I think the Toronto Blue Jays management as a whole needs to make is that we need to prioritize getting guys like this. In fact, I would much rather we spend an arm and a leg mm-hmm. for this guy than Lucas Giolito and or Oldest Chapman. You know, like the, this is the guy, right. a quality, quality dude for the future. Who, can, who can go long term. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm so sold on this. Dude. Okay, I, I hear you. Because, you know, the, I mean, this is a guy, like, we're talking about all our prospects. Like, imagine if any of our prospects became Alexis Diaz. You're laughing. Like, you're laughing. You're right? laughing. Bro. So I'm willing to spend, like, a top prospect. Like, literally, I, like, you know, you know, call me blasphemous, but, like, you know, uh, Bar- uh, Barrios, or what's his name? Barrera. Barrera. Yeah. I haven't seen this guy. I'm not attached to him. He's in 2026. I want to win in 2024, 2023. 100%. That's when I want to win the World Series. I feel like there's kind of a mentality around Toronto Blue Jays fans that bullpen just appears out of thin air. It, it doesn't. It for us. doesn't. It not just for us. actually doesn't. It maybe if nope. you're on the Tampa Bay Rays, you can bullpen just grows on trees over there, right? It's like yeah. bullpen just yeah. grows on trees and it just appears out of nowhere. Clearly for the Toronto Blue Jays, it does not, and we are going to need to pay to mm-hmm. get good bullpen. This needs to be a trade target for the Toronto Blue Jays, and they need to get on the phone and ask about this guy. I agree. And uh, now, last but not least, just to sprinkle in a little bit of offense, because I know that a few of you out there said, you know. To replying to what we've been saying, how yeah. we need to get pitching, we need to get pitching. So 
some of you said, well, the offense has been struggling and they have been to some regard. We did see we're ninth in baseball. Yeah. So what would complement our team? And I thought about this. You know, we're not looking for anyone to be a starting player. Like, we have so many starting players. I mean, mm -hmm. hell, Kirk's basically getting no playing time now because you got Brandon Belts, you know, clogging up the hole, yeah. uh, the four hole. Uh, but then I was like, okay, well, you, you got Espinal injured. You got mm -hmm. Biggio down there. It's not doing anything. We need some guys who are utility players who could do well. Well, who's on a one-year deal? You got Jerickson Profar, who we were looking at last year in the offseason, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he's now with the Colorado Rockies. And now I know the war looks ugly, but um, he's not really a, a, a quality, high-quality defender, but he can give you some good offense. And I think those numbers are going to go up because last year he was phenomenal. He was, he, he, was was pretty phenomenal. Good. he was pretty good last year, man. He had a 110 OPS plus, And, I mean, he's just yeah. one of those guys that you can kind of plug in at the bottom of your lineup yeah. and be happy about, right? Right now – we do have a few guys down there when we're cycling through that are frankly just outs, right? Mm -hmm. Kevin Biggio is just an mm -hmm. out. I don't want to take too much time just shitting on Kevin Biggio. Yeah. I think we've done that enough <laughs> on this we've channel. Done it so much. You know, but he is absolutely a clear cut out. He's just not providing anything. Mm -hmm. Jerkson Profar is a dude who could compliment Kevin Kiermaier mm -hmm. down there. You put Jerkson Profar eight, maybe he gets on, Kevin Kiermaier can move yeah. him over, and now you, now you got the top of the lineup and you got a yeah. man on second, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is what a, somebody like this could provide, and it'll just make that third inning of the ball game, you know, when you're trying to go through the lineup one more time, mm -hmm. just a little bit more lethal, which would be really nice for these Blue Jays because as we've seen, mm -hmm. when you can get the bottom of the lineup going, yeah. That's that's when you can drop twenty. That's Absolutely. when you can drop a twenty bomb. Look, you need compliments like this to your to your uh, position players. You know, I mean, right now we got uh, no disrespect to Clement. Maybe he's going to pop off this year, but yeah. we got Clement. <laughs> we got uh, Lucas. Lucas. I, yeah. I, I don't know if I want to roll these with these guys when it comes to the postseason. I need someone who's a little bit more experienced, who's been with the Padres, right? Mm -hmm. Who's been kind of all over. So I would want Profar to compliment the team. And guess what? Probably ain't gonna cost that much. Yeah, especially the Rockies. They, I, I, I don't know what they do over there with trading. They, they just don't seem to get it right. No, for you real, know? man. Like I feel like we can absolutely fleece them. And also, yeah. too, I mean, God forbid. But if there was an injury, this is absolutely a right. phenomenal guy. Right. I mean, he, he he was batting like I think lead off or second lead for off. the uh, for the Padres at Bro, one point yeah. last year, yeah. right? It's yeah. like that's a good damn ball team that you know he mm -hmm. was high in their lineup. So mm -hmm. if we did have a big time injury, you know, uh oh, Whit Merrifield's down, or uh oh, somebody in the outfield exactly. goes down. You can be the guy, you yep. can step in, and you can play that role at least well enough. I don't know if you can say that for some of our other players. I agree. I agree. Guys, let us know in the comments down below. What do you think about these possible trade candidates for the Toronto Blue Jays? Anything that you disagree with or agree with? We want to hear your voice in the comments down below. Yeah, also, please hit the like and subscribe button. And folks, $3 a month to come a Patreon member. Shout out and thank you to every single one of these current Patreon members and also our YouTube members, too. You guys are freaking awesome. We appreciate all of y'all. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Watching. And go, go Chase, Chase Go! go.